So I want to introduce Dr. Ann Gillies, who is our next speaker. Now, did she talk about a one-woman show when she speaks to you, either in person or in front of a crowd? Anne is energetic, good-natured, focused, kind, and with spine to spare. And don't you wish that we had more politicians with spine that they could gross up? <laughs> You know, I worked for a couple of politicians in my life who had spine, and they'd rather quit politics than quit their principles and quit their ideals. And that's, and that's ultimately what they did, because they said, I'm not, I'm not moving, I'm not changing, because I'd rather serve God than men. And who said that? It was Jesus Christ who said that. Where is your choice? Where is your allegiance? Who do you really want to please on this earth, God or men? That's a, pol that's, a, that's a question every politician needs to ask him or herself. What are they in this for? Anyway, we'll finish. <laughs> Dr. Gillies is a lover of truth and human flourishing, who courageously leads the charge against falsehoods and harms in society, despite as well as because of the personal price she has paid. And I can tell you this from the bottom of my heart. Dr. Gillies is the real deal. Dr. Gillies, thank you for joining us today. Hello, everyone. It is wonderful to be here with you today. And I'm own school, so I actually typed out some notes. I'm not sure how this is going to work. I'm Faith, family, and freedom. It's all under assault. So if you think of what we're here to promote, faith, family, and freedom, Marxism, queer theory, and gender ideology, are on the other side of the scale. They want to turn upside down everything that is reality. Queer theory is all about deconstructing the family and we need to stand firm for our families. Let's see if I can figure this out a little better here. So, queer theory, all these, um, these three, queer theory, Marxism and gender ideology have gained traction in the workplace, in our public schools, and all public in institutions across Canada. And it's not just Canada, folks, of course. But you know, when you, you now apply for a driver's license, it's what gender are you, not what sex are you. We need to come back to the basic language. It's not about gender, it's about biological sex. Marxism seeks to replace the role of faith with the state. Faith is, is directly oppositional to Marxism. So Marxist theology wants to replace faith. So we are here today because we have a faith. Now we may not share the same faith, but we have a faith and we have freedom of religion still in Canada. But we have to join together and we have to stick together to keep that because everything that's coming against us wants to destroy our freedoms. Marxism does Un undermine the very basic belief in the supremacy of God that was one of the foundational concepts of our country, of Canada. It is the foundation for our laws and values. Without faith, there is no moral compass to guide our society. And we're left with a system where power, where power dictates what is right and wrong, not moral absolutes, not kindness, not generosity, but power. The more powerful you are politically or monetarily, the more you can control other people. But that's not the principle that Canada was built on. Queer theory and gender dysphoria, gender ideology, erode the foundation of faith by promoting ideas that are fundamentally at odds with religious teaching. Faith communities have been pushed to accept concepts of sexuality. And you and I know that many, um, certainly within the Christian realm, many, many congregations have capitulated to the ideology, to LGBTQ pressure. But you know, family is still the primary institution where values are taught and nurtured. And it's here, it's in the family that children learn to love and respect, and they learn responsibility. We must encourage our families to stand strong. That's why we're here today. 
where Marxism views the family as an institution that needs to be dismantled. That's why politically we're in trouble, folks, because this is happening all across Canada. Queer theory and gender ideology promote ideas that the traditional family structures, so man, woman, husband, wife, and children are outdated and oppressive. Did you know that because you're a white heterosexual father that you're oppressive? I mean, these are the, these are the, uh, I would say this is the craziness that is propagated by queer theory. That anything that is rational has become irrational. And we need to take back those things that we have lost. It undermines the rights of parents to raise their children according to their own values and beliefs. The ro erosion of family authority poses a significant threat to the security and stability of our society. If we erode, if we allow the very foundation of our families to be destroyed, that will threaten everything in our society. It is the bedrock of our society. We have to encourage families and we need to step out and stand up for young people to encourage them to have children and not listen to the rhetoric that somehow children are awful and they're gonna, you know, it's gonna um, make climate change, you know, horrible if we have children and all the rhetoric that goes with that. I'm not gonna get into that. Queer theory and gender ideology pose a threat to our freedoms in Canada, particularly the freedom of speech and the freedom of religion. And it includes the mandates of using specific language. Remember Jordan Peterson in, in 2016 stood before Parliament and cautioned parliamentarians on what we would call the trans, the trans pronoun bill. Well, look what's happened, folks. He was absolutely right. The language, we are, we are forced to acknowledge the preferred pronouns, penalizing individuals and organizations that refuse to comply and bowing to LGBTQ activists. We have nothing against individuals on their own. We're not, we're not telling you that these people are evil. That's not what we're, we're about. We're talking about the activism and the actual underlying theories and the agendas. It's crucial that we reaffirm our commitment to faith, family, and freedom as the guiding principles of our society. We need to join arms and link arms together and promote these things. We must return to a belief in the supremacy of God as the foundation for our laws and values. This doesn't mean imposing a particular religion or religious view on other people but it recognizes a higher moral authority. Guess what? Prime Minister Trudeau, you are not God. You are not God. There is a higher moral authority over Canada and over this world. And we need to come back to the realization, the ethical grounding for our society. Faith encourages us to see each person as inherently valuable. You are valuable, David. You are valuable, Camille. You are valuable, people. You are valuable. Each one of you is unique. You are valuable. And you are valuable in God's eyes. You are deserving of respect. And we need to provide moral clarity to our young people to navigate the complex issues of sexuality. In fact, not just to our young people, folks all people across Canada, we must bring them back to their roots because they're confused. It doesn't matter if they're 18 or eight or 80, they're all confused with what's going on in our society. And we must come back to the supremacy of God to lead us, to lead us together to truth. We must strengthen families to fulfill their role in society, protecting the rights of parents and freeing them from the interference of state and educational institutions. We must encourage our politicians as much as we can, but we must encourage them to promote policies that encourage family structure and demand education, respect the values of parents and families rather than undermining them. We must vigorously defend the principle of freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of conscience, 
Canadians must be free to express their beliefs without fear of retribution. They must not be forced to conform to these ideologies and to, that violate their very values, their core values. We must stand against these ideologies. Marxism, queer theory, gender ideology threaten the principle of faith, family, and freedom. Just a couple more pages. These ideologies do seek to, to weaken the family unit and erode Canadian freedoms. And parents, you must recognize and resist these ideologies. Keep your eyes open. Look to what's happening. We must honor the dignity of all and not allow the deconstruction or destruction of our precious children with gender affirmation, social transitioning, puberty blockers, hormones, and body mutilation, as, as Jack was talking about. And if you want to know the whole picture on that, check out the CAS review. In fact, the CAS review, which came out of Britain last year, um, just this year actually, was the final review. They even um, said that social transitioning needs to be disallowed. Social transitioning in itself is a problem for children. So even to let boys dress as girls, well, hello, yeah, if they're two years old and they're playing dress up, that's different. But when you get a 13-year-old boy dressing like a, a girl, that is conditioning. That's indoctrination. So it's time for parents to unite across this land of Canada to arise and stand firm. E expose the indoctrination and tyranny within our education systems. And most of all, rescue our children. Rise as one to defend the young. And I want to add this, this because I just received this this morning, a brand new study uh, by Dr. Michael Laidlaw. So Google him. He's an endocrinologist in the U.S. Just sent to this study that was just completed. And it verifies everything that David uh, was talking about. No, yeah, Frank, Jack was talking about. I've got too many names of mine. So this is what he says regarding adverse psychological effects of high-dose testosterone, which is what they give young girls who are deciding they could be cross-sex, which can never happen, by the way. So high-dose testosterone is given for the purpose of transitioning natal females in gender affirming therapy. Some of these adverse reactions, and this is his quote, include depressed mood. So if you have children in your family, whether it's a niece, ne uh, a nephew, grandchild, these are the symptoms you need to look for when they start taking these, these hormones and puberty blockers. Depressed moods, emotional disorders, a lot of emotional catharsis, emotional distress, <coughs> anger, aggression, antisocial behavior. And we see that. Unfortunately, we see it in those who are um, set up to counter protest against us from the LGBT. We see it. Antisocial behavior. But listen to this Homos homicidal ideation not just suicidal they become homicidal this is really scary do you understand when we stand up as parents and speak truth and these children have been on hormones for how many years and it's changed their brains that's changed the brain chemistry there are all kinds of negative effects and so homicidal ideation is one self-destructive behavior Affect liability, that means emotional liability. Dissociation, which is something I dealt with a lot when I treated uh, adult survivors of complex trauma. And disorient disorientation. So this is what Laidlaw also says. In our opinion, the adverse psychological reactions to testosterone as used in natal female transition are related to the harmful doses administered. And they also, in this paper, discuss the potential relation to suicidal ideation and the suicide found in su subsequent studies that uh, Jack von Saska talked about. This is very real. This is very real. And what you hear in social media and all the good things about transitioning, that's all about queer theory at work, turning everything upside down, saying good is evil because what they're doing to our children is evil. So let's stand together, let's be together, 
and let's continue to march together to rescue our children. Rise up as one to defend the young.